Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, sorry, I am a couple minutes late. I was just writing in the description for the live because this is a, actually a really, really important topic that I'm going to be talking about today. It's been brought to my attention a little bit more in my practice. Um, and this actually very much pertains to, interestingly enough, how I was training and how I was able to go from having adrenal dysfunction back in February to now completing an Ironman 70.3 last week, even when things weren't completely 100%. So with that in mind, um, today we're going to be talking about circadian rhythm and its um, its effect on not only athletic performance, but overall optimal health. Since it's not only, if you're performing well, that means that you're in optimal health. So really this could be relating to several different populations. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm just going to get started. Hello, my name is Drew Mulvey. I am a certified dietitian nutritionist, board certified nutrition specialist, and certified integrative sports nutritionist. So I do specialize in performance nutrition for athletes and um, autoimmune conditions and disordered eating for athletes and non-athletes. But really, I work close with those individuals that are struggling with their health performance and nutrition goals and really help them to lay the foundation so that they have a proper relationship with food. They know how to use it as fuel and they can really get that freedom that they want to live the quality of life that they want. And whether that's with athletic potential or even doing the activities that you want to do, it's a, it's a quality of life thing. So if that pertains to you, I'd absolutely love to speak with you. You can sign up for a strategy session, a free strategy session with me. That's going to be an hour. That's going to be, the link is going to be in my bio for those that are in Instagram. For those that are on Facebook, it's going to be below. All right. So today I'm going to be talking about the importance of circadian rhythm. Now, what exactly is circadian rhythm? This has been thrown out a lot and um, I'm just going to go a couple steps back. So what inspired me to do this? I have been looking a little bit deeper into the effects of working shifts and shift workers should say the night shift workers. Um, They're working during a time when it is dark. So it's outside of our window of our circadian rhythm. And that can have an effect on several different processes in the body. But how can this actually affect others that aren't shift workers? So people that are traveling through time zones, a lot of athletes travel through different time zones. There are athletes in particular, I was one of those athletes that wake up very early in the morning to be able to get their training in. And that's usually before the sun rises. So how exactly do you combat this? Or I should probably go into a little bit more detail on why this is so important that you want to have this balanced and what it does to your body. So circadian rhythm is basically your wake sleep cycle. It's your light and dark cycle. So if anybody has seen the Blue Zones documentary that was on Netflix, they did a great job of talking about this. That usually in the winter time, it's kind of like we go into, we're like bears a little bit. We go into, we're supposed to go into hibernation because we go to bed when it gets dark and then we wake up when it's light. Now, being in America and being in the, we're in the 21st century, 22nd century, well, whatever, 21st century, we're in the 21st century. I don't know where I got 22nd, sorry. That is not always going to be applicable. And then obviously it would mean that in the summertime that we have more daylight so that we're not sleeping as much. So it's kind of like hibernating. But with that in mind, not many people are doing that. And circadian rhythm is very important for a lot of different biological processes in your body. It's important for electrolyte balance. So mark this down. This is really, really important because then this is going to actually segue us into uh, what we can do to be able to help the body to regulate better. It helps with electrolyte balance. So electrolyte helps with fluid electrolyte balance. It helps with muscle function. It helps with brain conduction. It helps with uh, just overall well-being and sense, a sense of calm. So it dysregulates electrolytes. It also is, res well, if it's dysregulated, I should say that. But it's also responsible for um, balancing electrolytes. It's responsible for balancing neurotransmitters. Keep that in mind. And it's also responsible for production of specific metabolites in your body, metabolic compounds that are very important for your body to function properly. Um, with that in mind, so what exactly does this mean in that, did I say hormones too? Yes, it helps to regulate hormones as well. So what exactly does that mean? 
Okay, so there's hormonal balance and then there's electrolyte balance and I talked about neurotransmitters. So let's start with, oh, what's gonna be the most, I think everybody wants to know about neurotransmitters, right? Okay, we'll start with that because that actually can be linked to hormones. Okay, so neurotransmitters, usually the ones that we talk about are serotonin and dopamine in particular. So those are the ones that are your feel-good hormones. There's also melatonin as well. So we know that melatonin usually rises at night when it gets dark out so that we can fall asleep. Now, melatonin is also a potent anti-inflammatory compound. So that's why they usually recommend to get more sleep for recovery is that melatonin is actually going to decrease the amount of inflammation in your body. So there's melatonin, there's serotonin, which is your feel-good neurotransmitter, and then there's dopamine, which is actually responsible for more than just your mood, and it's not just the reward center. You need dopamine, that actually does help to regulate your sleep-wake cycle, but it helps to regulate appetite, it helps with brain focus, it helps with uh, your mood, it helps with so many different things. So you want to make sure that your dopamine levels are able to be functioning properly. If your dopamine isn't functioning properly, then that can be um, causing brain fog in particular. So you want to make sure that dopamine is in proper amounts. Other neurotransmitters, we talked about melatonin, we talked about serotonin, and we talked about dopamine. So those are super, super important. Now, when the circadian rhythm is dysregulated, what do you think is going to happen to those? Well, dopamine could definitely decrease and serotonin and melatonin could definitely decrease. And why is this? Because there are certain cofactors that are along a certain pathway that are, is responsible for the production of serotonin and melatonin and also dopamine. So there's two different pathways that B6 in particular, so B vitamins, are going to be very, very important. So that's actually going to segue me into hormonal health. So what this does is when your circadian rhythm is, say you're nice and balanced and we're living in like Costa Rica and we're living in one of the blue zones. Who would like that? I love that, that would be great. Um, and your circadian rhythm is completely balanced. So down this pathway in particular, it starts with phenylalanine, so that's an amino acid, but then it all goes all the way down to adrenaline and noradrenaline. So we know adrenaline and noradrenaline as giving us energy. Adrenaline, it's adrenaline rush, but that can also increase cortisol levels. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because cortisol is needed in the acute it helps us with our focus, it helps us with our heart rhythm, it helps us, actually it's an anti-inflammatory, so it does help us with muscle recovery and it's actually uh, helping us with pain too. So you get cortisone shots, there's a reason why the cortisone actually helps to decrease the amount of pain. So with that, um, hormonally, it helps with a natural production of adrenaline and noradrenaline. So if something comes your way, no matter what, even if you're balanced, you're not gonna freak out and your body's not going to freak out. Now, most people's circadian rhythm is not necessarily regulated. So what is that going to cause? There is going to be a gap with that adrenaline and noradrenaline production. So if that B vitamin is not there for dopamine, then that goes into adrenaline and noradrenaline. The cortisol levels are going to really start jacking up to try and get you to move properly. And with that, your body's actually going more towards producing cortisol instead of producing other hormones. So estrogen, progesterone for women and testosterone for men. So what does that usually cause? That can cause hormonal imbalance. That can also cause other symptoms. Interestingly enough, estrogen and progesterone are, I talk about this all the time, they are not just important for reproduction. Estrogen in particular is important for strength. It is important for muscle production. It is important for brain focus. It is important for bone health. It's important for several, actually, it's important for the production of serotonin. And progesterone is very important for the production of dopamine. It's important that it gets elevated after you ovulate. And I believe that one, it helps with, no, it's the estrogen that helps with um, lowering LDL levels. But progesterone has a lot of great benefits that you need from it. 
Now, estrogen in particular, that's what's going to help you to actually pull from glycogen a heck of a lot better, and you're going to be much more insulin sensitive. What does that mean? That your body's able to regulate carbohydrates much more effectively, so you're not getting sleepy, and you're able to actually draw energy from the carbohydrates instead of you being kind of sensitive to them. So, and then testosterone, women do have testosterone too. We need that in order to produce muscle. We need that for brain focus. We need that for energy. Um, there's so many different things that you need testosterone for. So for men, you're, if you have low testosterone, then sometimes your estrogen can go up too. And that's where you kind of get a little bit of that belly right there. All right, but with the testosterone, and estrogen, if those start to deplete because cortisol levels are high, then you start to see decreased muscle tone. You start to see brain fog. You start to see increased cholesterol levels. You start to see decreased insulin sensitivity. So you're not able to pull from that glycogen or those carbohydrates effectively, let alone your blood isn't able to, your blood, sorry, your, your body isn't able to pull that insulin out of the blood. And what does insulin do? It can actually increase fat storage. So that's why it can be really hard when you're not sleeping well and you seem like you're holding on to weight. That's the reason why, because of those cortisol levels and because it manipulates your hormones like that. But what also happens is that when cortisol is elevated, another hormone is called aldosterone is also elevated. That makes you retain salt and it also makes you retain water. It helps with your fluid electrolyte balance. Now with that, that's why before you get your period, you usually get bloated because progesterone is responsible for increased aldosterone levels. So that's why you just get really, really puffy. Um, there's a way around that obviously, but we as women, we know the puffiness. So that's what it comes from, the aldosterone. So it can manipulate the aldosterone. It can manipulate your hydration in particular. Now, does that mean that you have to nix the sodium altogether? No, it is part of electrolyte balance. So uh, let's go to electrolytes. Okay, segue into that. So what is the importance of electrolytes? Well, let's talk about the five electrolytes. There's potassium, magnesium, sodium, chloride, and calcium. Yes, calcium is actually an electrolyte. So some of these are responsible for muscle contraction, or I shouldn't say contraction, muscle relaxation. And some of them are, I should say that maybe, muscle contraction. Um, that's more like muscle constriction. It's also responsible for just fluid electrolyte balance in your body. So making sure that your body stays hydrated, making sure that you're able to rest, making sure that you have a general sense of well-being. Actually, it's very important for regulating your metabolism and digesting and assimilating important nutrients such as macronutrients. Why is that? Chloride, hydrochloric acid, think about that. Hydrochloric acid is needed to be able to digest and assimilate all the nutrients from our food. So what happens when everything is dysregulated? So obviously the sodium levels are going to be dysregulated and your heart rate is going to go up. Cortisol is going to get your heart rate up. It depletes the potassium and magnesium, which is really important for regulating that heart rhythm, as well as maintaining that fluid electrolyte balance and also relaxing your muscles. Calcium is also very important for that, and it's going to be very important for your bones, obviously. Magnesium is important for the absorption of calcium. Very interesting. So it's going to just throw a lot of things off. So you can start to see that maybe your bone density, that it does actually, it does have an effect on your bone density. You're not able to contract and relax your muscles effectively. And what that does is your body is using so much more energy and it's going to fatigue a heck of a lot earlier. So you're not going to be able to progress in the way that you want to and get to those longer miles without fatiguing beforehand. Now, yes, there are other factors in there too, which actually I might, I might just allude to that as well. So with that in mind, there's electrolytes, hormones, and um, we said neurotransmitters. So you're in a good place. You're happy mentally. You feel good. You're digesting things really well. You're maintaining your muscle mass. You are showing up to practice and you're not fatiguing super early. You're able to progress in the way that you need to progress and you're in optimizing your athletic performance. So what can we do in order to combat this? Well, I do want to say symptoms of dysregulation with your circadian rhythm. So if you do start to see these, that could be brain fog. 
you can start to have impaired digestion because I didn't say this before about the chloride. When your body is overworked, your body's not really producing hydrochloric acid as much and you're not gonna be able to digest and assimilate the nutrients from your food effectively as you should and that's also going to affect your muscle protein synthesis, your bone health, your brain health, your heart health, because we need all of those nutrients to be able to function properly. You're not going to be able to maintain muscle tone as well. You're gonna be sleepy and ornery. Um, you're gonna be, what happens is that your body doesn't know exactly when to give out these hormones. So what happens sometimes is that people, they start out low and then all of a sudden at the end of the day, cortisol goes up. It shouldn't look, look like that. A normal cortisol cur curve should, it should peak at the beginning of the day and then start going down because that's when the melatonin is going to start being released and start being produced. So you're not going to be sleeping as well. And that altogether is also going to throw off your circadian rhythm. Um, there's going to be lower libido because you're not producing your sex hormones properly. For those of you that are women, your menses could start to be irregular and you could actually even lose your menses. Um, HDL can start to go up. You're not really processing glucose or carbohydrates effectively, like you're getting super tired and hangry. Yes, if you're getting hangry like every two hours, then that is an indication that there is something going on in your body that is dysregulated. And this all has to go with circadian rhythm. So if we think about this, somebody, if this is a light, dark sense, I get, yeah, it's a light, dark sensor. I would say it's a light, dark sensor. What happens exactly when it's dysregulated? We're not going to be performing optimally. We're not going to be showing up optimally. We're not going to be thinking optimally. We're not going to be happy campers. And what's going to happen? In fact, um, I have a couple of articles that they were looking at shift workers and they were looking at athletes in particular, but they found that in shift workers that their PUFAs, so polyunsaturated fatty acids to fatty acid ratios were actually, I believe it was decreased in particular. I do want to, I do want to read from this study. So it was that these fatty acid levels, yep, there was a decrease in these um, polyunsaturated fatty acid levels. Now, why is that important? Because omega-3 fatty acids are very important for keeping inflammation down. Another thing that they had seen is an increase in cholesterol levels. As I was saying, when things get dysregulated, your cholesterol levels get dysregulated because your hormones get dysregulated as well. They were also finding increases in glutamine, isoleucine, and leucine. So you would think, oh, that's a good thing because glutamine is really great for muscle protein synthesis and so is leucine. When they're high, it's because your body's in overdrive and it's pulling from other sources. Now, leucine is going to be pulled first from your stomach and that's why one of the first indicators that something is off is going to be linked to your gut. And that would be your hat, you have a bunch of food sensitivities. They're just coming up. You have, start to have gut issues, digestive issues. Um, so with that in mind, uh, the glutamine is being depleted in your body and leucine is being depleted. Now, leucine is the amino acid that is really important for muscle protein synthesis. I've talked about it. Um, please go over to my website. I talk about this in one of my blog posts. Look up leucine and the importance of leucine for muscle protein synthesis as well as repair. But glutamine is also being depleted because your body's in hyperdrive. Why should we worry about that? Because glutamine is also responsible for keeping your gut lining intact. And it's also responsible for the production of your body's natural antioxidant. So where am I getting here? Is that the inflammation is going to be a heck of a lot higher. Now with athletes, you already have a stressor from multiple, it could be multiple hours of training. Um, that, well, yeah, that is a stressor multiple hours of stressors or lots of training, then you also have stressors from life. You have psychological stressors. I mean, you have stressors all around you. So all of this is starting to impact you and that also impacts the effectiveness of your circadian rhythm. So there's internal and there's external. So what are some things that we can do to help combat this and what did I do in particular? Well, for those of you that um, do wake up early in the morning, I mean, obviously, like sleep is just, it's, that's common sense. Sleep is going to really help you to 
get around the circadian rhythm, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go to bed when the sun goes down and then rise when the sun goes up. I mean, it would be great if that were the case, but uh, we live in America. That's just not going to be the case. So I was waking up at 4.15. That's usually what time I get up in the morning. And I was going to the gym. I was training. Um, it's two days a week. I would do strength training and then go right to some sort of workout um, for the training plan. So it would be swimming, it would be cycling, or it was usually swimming. So with that, I had to also fuel effectively too. But would that be in con uh, accordance with my circadian rhythm? No. So here are some of the things that I incorporated and that you can incorporate to be able to combat those dysregulations in circadian rhythm. One, well, go to bed earlier. I started going to bed earlier. I started going to bed at 8.30 so that I would get that eight hours of sleep because that really is important. But when, what if you're not always getting that <laughs> level of sleep? Okay, well, you're just going to have to face it that you're not going to have the most optimal training session, but you're still going to be able to get your fitness up. So some other things that you can incorporate are increase in antioxidants. So I was talking about that, that glutamine is the precursor to glutathione. And when your body is dysregulated like that, the inflammation is up and your body is using up that glutathione. So getting in good sources of glutamine, like bone broth is a really good source of glutamine. Um, other good sources of glutamine are like collagen. So grass-fed collagen, you can incorporate that as well. Any antioxidants, uh, really brightly colored food, there's going to be a bunch of different antioxidants in there. Vitamin A, C, and E in particular. So vitamin A is in a lot of your orange vegetables as well as green leafy vegetables. You're going to get your vitamin C. It's not just in citrus. It's actually broccoli is a good one, guava. Um, I usually recommend this thing called camu camu powder. And vitamin C is also going to help with the healthy production of noradrenaline and adrenaline. Um, so that you're, it basically adjusts your body to the demands that are being placed on it. Another antioxidant that I would recommend that you incorporate are is a good source of omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory, they're anti-clotting. Um, that comes from wild-caught fish in particular. So wild-caught salmon, cod, wild-caught tuna in particular, uh, mackerel and herring too are good sources. Oh, sardines! Sardines are like the best um, to incorporate in. Or there's also the plant-based omega-3 fatty acids that are from walnuts, your green leafy vegetables, um, pretty much all your seeds. I shouldn't say that. So the seeds in particular, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds are going to be really good sources of omega-3 fatty acids that you want to incorporate into your day so that you are not, well, it's basically they're cleaning up the inflammation. I'll just say that. And then also the omega-3 fatty acids help to decrease those cortisol levels so that you're going to be able to get things in balance. Uh, number two, I was talking about isoleucine, leucine, and glutamine being high. So you want to make sure that you're repleting that in your nutrition plan. Um, that is going to mean that don't skimp on the protein. Uh, protein is made up of 20 different amino acids. So you want to make sure that you're getting adequate amounts of protein. I usually recommend about 1.8 grams per kilogram of protein. Usually for endurance athletes in the new studies, it's recommending that 1.8 grams per kilogram of protein is essential and works better for muscle recovery and better recovery in endurance athletes. So it's not lower, it's actually increased. So you want at least a minimum of 1.8 grams per kilogram. It might even go up depending on how much stress is on your body. If you do work in a shift, if you're a night shift worker, I, I actually, I think there's somebody that I follow that is a, works can late nights sometimes and they're training for like Ironmans. So um, making sure that you're not skimping on the protein. The pro protein is also going to help to regulate insulin levels as well. You don't want to go super high on protein because that can also um, create an insulin response, but you want to have enough of that protein in order to, sorry about that. You want to have enough of that protein in order to get the glutamine and the isoleucine and the leucine so that you're able to maintain your lean body mass because that's also going to be responsible for your metabolism and for that insulin sensitivity so that you can just utilize your carbohydrates much more effectively. 
Um, okay, so, so there's animal-based sources and there's also plant-based sources. So there's hemp seed protein, there's pea protein, there's um, brown rice protein, there is soy protein, uh, there's, egg, well, egg is vegetarian, I would say, egg um, and dairy are more like vegetarian sources. But the thing with that is that the animal-based sources are going to be much more bioavailable than the plant-based sources. But still, you want to just make sure that you're getting adequate amounts of protein in there. And, okay, I'm going to throw this one in here. Decreasing the amount of sugary foods that you are having. You want to increase the antioxidants and increase the fiber. So you can still have carbohydrates, but they should be low glycemic. Low glycemic is means that they slow the release of blood sugar and insulin into your system so that your body's able to have sustained energy and it's not so much of an insulin spike. That way that your body's able to level out, plus those carbohydrates are going to help to decrease those cortisol levels and just to kind of calm the body down. So it's going to be important to have some of those lower glycemic foods, such as uh, your whole grains, fruits and vegetables in particular, even some starchy vegetables. You want to make sure you're having those like complex meals, so protein, a fat, and a carbohydrate, and really, really, um, as I say, colorful. And we want to increase sources of electrolytes. So potassium and magnesium, they shoot out of the cells when your body is super, super stressed out. So you want to be able to get bring more potassium and magnesium in. The recommended amount of potassium is actually 3,400 milligrams a day and like well I'm getting that that now I'm getting that but it's very it can be very difficult for most people to be able to get that so how is it that we can get more potassium and magnesium well potassium and magnesium well potassium in particular are pretty much going to be in all of your fruits and your vegetables and even some beans are really great sources of potassium um, potatoes sweet potatoes bananas avocados in particular so that's a little bit lower in carbohydrates a really great source of potassium that you can incorporate uh, coconut water very very high in potassium and your green leafy vegetables plus anything that is green that is a fruit or a vegetable is automatically going to have magnesium in it um, but chocolate also has magnesium so having some dark chocolate that has fiber in it as well plus a lot of antioxidants so guess what dark chocolate is going to be your friend other sources of electrolytes so yes you do want to actually have sodium so I usually recommend when your body is using up that adrenaline and noradrenaline so quickly it needs a little bit more of that sodium to be able to the have the body to cap I shouldn't say capture but to um, keep everything regulated. So keep up with the system pretty much and keep up with the demands. So having some electrolyte drink with some sodium in there and some potassium and magnesium, I'm gonna get to that in a second of what I was doing in particular to help with my training because I knew that I was training early in the morning. Um, other sources, I talked about calcium and talked about um, chloride in particular. So chloride, chlorine I shouldn't say chlorine but chloride in particular is very important for hydrochloric acid and so that's why people usually have celery juice in the morning because it helps with the increase of hydrochloric acid and um, I would add a little celery in there there's other sources of chloride and then calcium so calcium can also be found in other plant-based sources that can be in tahini and that can also be in like molasses but it's usually found in like grass-fed dairy, like yogurts. Yogurts in particular are going to be fermented, so that's going to be a double benefit for you. So making sure that you're really increasing the fruits and the vegetables, so you're getting a lot of antioxidants in there, and you are also getting an increase in electrolytes with potassium and magnesium, making sure that you don't skimp on the protein and have those clean sources of protein in each of those particular um particular arenas. Now, if you are running for long periods of time, then your body can utilize that sugar during a long run. So that's going to be different. Your body is going to be able to soak up the carbohydrates so that it can help with glycogen storage a little bit more. But what I was doing in particular is making sure that the sugar was coming from nutrient dense sources. So I was having dates, I was having berries, I was having bananas afterwards so that I was getting those electrolytes in there as well as those antioxidants. 
afterwards, I was making sure that I had a good clean source of protein in there. So right now that I am on like a modified protocol, um, I was having some plant-based protein in like a smoothie uh, uh, with some grain-free granola and some coconut yogurt. So making sure that I had those, a lot of color, had some complex carbohydrates, and you can have some simpler carbohydrates too. It's if it's so for more a longer time, you can have those simpler carbohydrates. So for like from dates and uh, dry fruit. But beforehand, to help with the electrolytes, when you are waking up, you've been fasting for a long period of time and your body is in a little overdrive. I wouldn't recommend to just down the coffee and go to a training session. Just don't do that. So when I was recovering from the adrenal dysfunction, um, that would have just sent me the other way. So I had to nourish my adrenals and help with the he uh, healthy production of cortisol for my system because I had actually tanked in cortisol. So I need a little bit more sodium to get everything up. But I have concocted a drink. It is a matcha cacao adrenal cocktail. It has coconut water. It has sea salt, has matcha in it, a little bit of cacao powder, and I put some stevia in there. Sometimes I did put protein powder and sometimes I did couple it with like a banana if I was running for a long period of time. But what that does is it helps you, it delivers potassium, it delivers sodium. You're also getting magnesium from the cacao and the matcha. You're getting probably even like a little bit of vitamin C in there from the, the matcha and the plant. I wouldn't be surprised if there's vitamin C. You're getting those antioxidants, so it's really helping your system to recover and preparing it to go into the rest of the morning. Uh, it's normally recommended that people wake up and they have water with sea salt and lime in it. This is kind of like the idea of that, but it just gives you a little bit more of a of um, a healthier release of adrenaline and noradrenaline so that you can get through your workout and that it actually helps your body to acclimate to your training. So that's one thing that you can incorporate in the mornings when you are off having that little adrenal cocktail in there, the adrenal matcha and cacao cocktail, so that you have those antioxidants and that you have um, all of those electrolytes. Making sure that you're really bumping up the fruits and the vegetables and the antioxidants. We as athletes, we need about 16 to 19 um, servings of fruits and vegetables and probably most people that are really burning the candle at both ends need those too. So I personally take Juice Plus, so I take an antioxidant powder. Uh, they're basically antioxidant powders um, from fruits and vegetables so that I'm getting those antioxidants immediately. And I have felt such a difference with those. Um, incorporating good sources of omega-3 fatty acids, so getting some fish in there, wild-caught fish, at least three to four times per week, as well as those plant-based sources of omega-3 fatty acids. So that's going to be your green leafy vegetables, your chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, pumpkin seeds in particular very good source of zinc and magnesium, I want to say, and flax seeds. Um, other things that I was doing, oh yes, I mean, well, making sure that you're on a schedule and that there's a healthy insulin response. So that would be eating like, they say every three to four hours, sometimes it might even be every two to three hours. So you want to make sure that you're replenishing your body. But these are just some of the things that you can start to incorporate into your routine to combat if you're traveling across time zones, if you are travel, or if you're training early in the morning, or you just get a, a bad night of sleep, or you are a shift worker, these are some hacks that you can incorporate in. So very important. Um, all right. So other than that, I think I covered what the importance of circadian rhythm is and what it actually. Uh, dictates in your body and the biological processes that it's responsible for, what happens when it's dysregulated, and some of the things that we can use to combat it. Let's use some common sense. Let's try to get as much sleep as we can. But when that's not always an option, here are some, well, I shouldn't say that. That should be a priority. But here are some things that we can help to prevent not being able to reach our athletic potential and our athletic goals, let alone our goals in life. I've been able to incorporate these, and let me tell you, that is how I went from adrenal dysfunction to an Ironman 70.3, and I I crushed it. I crushed my Ironman 70.3, and then I want that for you, too. So if my story is inspiring, if this has really, really touched you today, and you want some more ways, so there are many more ways, these are just three things that you can do to 
help um, to combat the effects of the circadian rhythm. If you want more ways, I would absolutely love to set up that strategy session with you. So it's a free one-on-one, -on -one, about one hour strategy session that we can go over what you're doing and I can give you some tips and some tricks to be able to help to maintain that optimal performance and optimal health so that you can reach and maintain those goals. So for those of you that are on Facebook, the link is gonna be in my, that my comments. And for those of you on Instagram, the link is going to be in my bio. All right, so again, my name is Drew Malvi. I'm a certified dietitian nutritionist, board certified nutrition specialist, and certified integrated sports nutritionist, which basically uh, I am an integrative health practitioner. Yes, I work close with athletes with perform for performance nutrition and athletes and non-athletes for autoimmune and disordered eating. But in general, I work with all populations that are really struggling with their health, wellness, and nutrition goals and not being able to reach their true potential in life to prevent fatigue, to prevent any joint pain, to prevent them from missing the, the achievements that they have been working so hard for and to really well, get your life back so that you can start showing up as your best and feeling your best. If that's you, if I've done it for myself and other clients, I can definitely do it for you. So let's set up that strategy session and uh, let's get you, let's get you headed in the right direction and actually attaining your goals. Like I, I did an Ironman 70.3. Woohoo! Um, if that's one of your goals, I would absolutely love to talk to with you too. All right, everybody. Well, I thank you so much for coming in today. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to DM me. But I look forward to speaking to some of you on a strategy session. And I look forward to, well, I look forward to the weekend. I'm going to have a great weekend. Um, I look forward to hearing how some of these little tweaks are helping in each of your lives towards each of your goals. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Again, it's Friday. Have a great weekend. Have a great rest of your day. And I will catch you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.